You were probably expecting a cartoon that talks too fast and isn't funny, but instead you've been greeted with a reflection of perfection, the loquacious champion of greatness, the real deal Man of Steel, Chael, the PS for light heavyweight champion, Sonnen. Taylor couldn't make it today because I kicked his ass for asking a stupid question, and while he heals up for that joke of a show he makes on Wednesdays, I'm taking his time slot, his fans, and his questions and making this train wreck watchable. So make some popcorn, put the kids to bed, and full screen me because I'm bringing the thunder and the lightning, the sound and the fury, the Chael and the Sonnen, while I answer all your questions intended for a cartoon hack, we should have stopped before he started. And being the nice guy that I am, I'll even give away one of Tracy's shirts as a consolation for having to put up with this terrible crap week in and week out. Let's get this over with. Kaboom. First up this week. Oh, nobody likes you, annoying announcer guy. Unlike some people, I learned to read, so I'll take care of the questions this week. First up, we got Sakuraba1982, who asked, What would you rate the most annoying thing in the world? My vote would be your fingers breaking through the toilet paper by mistake. Any chance of coming up with something more annoying for Tommy Sack? There are plenty of things more annoying than that, Sakuraba. For one, Timmy's voice. Sounds like somebody grinding gravel on a megaphone that's too close to a speaker in hell. Something else more annoying, John Jones in general. Thanks for coming out. Next up, Matt Runnels. If Ultimate Warrior would have grown a beard in the 80s, would he still be done? WWF champion? I don't know, Matt. Wrestling's fake, but let me tell you something about people with beards. They're cowards and communists. Beards are used to conceal the chin from my incoming fists. And sorry, John John, I don't care if you've got Merlin's beard on April 27th. It won't do a damn thing to help you from the 25-minute stomping you're gonna receive. As far as Terry Toenails is concerned, without his beard, you see the giant vagina he has on his face. Let's keep this rolling. Chris Avery. Who would win? A juiced-up Easter Bunny or Chael Sonnen? Since it's Easter and all. Chris, first of all, Easter was yesterday. Secondly, Peter Cottontail can have all the juice he wants. A full camp with Team Winkle Jackson. And 57 pounds pounds of TNT with him in the octagon, Chael Sonnen can beat any man, animal, or manimal on this planet. I'm so good, a picture of me could take down George St. Pierre. I'm like a can of Pringles. Once I start, the fun don't stop till the bell goes ding, ding, ding 25 minutes later and I'm leaving with your hardware and your girlfriend. To answer your question, Chris, moving on. Michael Divitorio. If you were to package this show into an Easter egg, what candy would be inside? A giant steaming log of crap, Michael. Jordan Hodges. What's worse, liking you on Facebook or following you on Twitter? Jordan, let me give you the rundown on what Tristan has to offer you on Twitter and Facebook. On Facebook, you're going to get excuses about why the show is late. On Twitter, you're going to get excuses about why the show is late with hashtags, okay? He's the Rampage Jackson of social media. Just excuses why he sucks and failures. Next, Pat King. Since Hollywood has no new ideas and only remakes older movies, what movie would you remake and cast a UFC fighter in? How about License to Drive starring John Jones as Corey Haim and The Rock as his loyal sidekick, Corey Feldman? Why The Rock? Because John can't act or drive, and it's a well-known fact that putting Dwayne Johnson in a remake instantly adds $100 million to your box office. And while we're remaking movies, let's put yours truly in a remake of The Untouchables because that's exactly what I am. And in four weeks, John Jones is going to be gone, baby, gone because I'll be leaving with a strap and he'll be leaving with a pink slip. All right, we're rolling. What do we have next? You Joss Mendavia. I own a sandwich cart and would like to name a sandwich after you. What's in your favorite sandwich? You Joss, I can't speak for Tina about what he enjoys in his sandwich, but based on the look on his face, I'm guessing he's got about 85 pounds of undigested horse meat sitting in his colon. So I say you throw every kind of meat you've got on that sucker, hold the veggies and pile on the cheese, then you're cutting Customers will know what it feels like to be a pissed off cartoon with no neck, tiny legs, and the inability to tell jokes that are actually funny. Who's next? Frank Otterbean. Is it narcissistic of me not to watch the sack anymore since my questions never get answered? Frank, I don't think narcissistic is the word you're looking for. If anything, not watching this show is therapeutic. Watching Tammy is like watching a Leota Machida fight. It's just terrible. You're gonna feel bad afterward, a little bit confused, and it'll leave you wondering why you even bothered to get out of bed. My advice? Each Monday and Wednesday, make Marcus Davis knee you in the corn nuts. It'll probably be a lot less painful than watching this garbage. Next question. Question, Shane McNulty. Are we ever going to see an animated version of the Ultimate Warrior as your co-host? Now, Shane, if Tori were here, he'd probably pause dramatically for a moment, and then you'd be treated with a terrible impression of the Ultimate Warrior spouting off some gibberish about spaceships and floating through veins. But this ain't the Terrence Howard show today. This is Chael Sack. So instead, you're going to be treated with the musical stylings of Portland's own new shoes. Now you've got me wanting more. That was a lot of shoes and terrible music. Last question in the randomly selected winner of this shirt. Tom James Bradley Larson. Tommy, I'm pretty new to the show, so I went back and watched all your Triple THS and sacks. So I guess my question is, where did I go wrong with my life? Tom, I will first say pick a name. You've got four, I've got three. Next, I will say congratulations on winning the shirt, because having free clothes, even if they feature a South Park ripoff who talks too fast, is better than being naked. And third, don't be so hard on yourself, Tom. Trinity's little show is a bit like a fireworks display. It's loud and it's bright and it keeps your attention at first, until you realize it's usually only 
good once a year. You're bored with it after a few minutes. It's over before you ever really get into it, and the finale never lives up to your expectations. My suggestion, take about two weeks off of watching Triple THS, then never watch it again. Don't bother thanking me for hosting, you're welcome. I'm guessing that Tampon will be back on Wednesday with a bunch of reused Nick Diaz jokes. If I didn't answer your question, too bad, because this is the last time I'm ever going to host this abortion of a show. Head to TripleTHS.com to pick up one of these shirts and support Trina's strip club addiction. See you all on April 27th when I go Opa Gangnam style on John John the Leprechaun for 25 minutes, taking my rightful place at the throne. Hail to the king, baby. I guess that leaves only one thing left to say. Kaboom.